I'm here with Christian Wright in Canmore, Alberta, and we're gonna to be touring his passive solar greenhouse, so the greenhouse that he operates with Alpine Edibles. This greenhouse is roughly about 350 square feet, and what's amazing about it is that it operates in a place like Canmore without any heat, growing four crops a year. And actually, if you talk to Christian, the main crop that he grows is actually education with kids. Uh, so they use this greenhouse to teach the kids how to grow food, how to start seedlings, um, how to get into the soil and just reconnect with nature. Um, and that happens throughout the school year, and then all summer long, they produce this incredible incredible plot and they're selling food in Canmore. Now coming back to the amazing part in Canmore, Alberta specifically, um, if you look around me, we've got this really narrow valley. So the sun is super truncated in the, in the winter time, uh, meaning that there's even less sun here in the winter time than there is in Calgary because the sun gets truncated essentially by the, by the mountains. Um, and it can get as cold as minus 35 degrees Celsius here, which makes it really challenging. Now, as we go through this greenhouse, and given that you can't sense temperature, what's really amazing about how the greenhouse functions and, some, and, and the construction of the greenhouse is that it's made with straw bales, which was a really interesting decision that I might not have chosen my, personally myself. Uh, but the greenhouse, given that it's made out of straw bales, has this really thick layer of cob, which is basically cl clay and sand, which is clearly absorbing surplus energy on this hot day. And so going into the greenhouse, you actually get a lowering of temperature, which is not something you typically find in a passive solar greenhouse. So it stays cooler during the day and warmer at night. Overall, this greenhouse is absolutely brilliant. We're going to talk about ventilation, orientation, glazing material, wall material, the foundation that Christian chose, um, and some of the tweaks that they've made over the years and how that's improved the productivity of the space. So come on with us on this tour. You're going to learn a ton. It's going to be really interesting and you're going to be able to apply a lot of these ideas to your own passive solar greenhouse. Thanks Christian. Thanks Rob. <laughs>
Uh, when we get more funds, we'll be putting some skylights in the back to get a little bit more light there. We also, I kind of installed like a poor man's version of the uh, ground swell uh, geo solar uh, system. And I really, we haven't finished it. Like I didn't complete it, but I've found that the building has worked so well in the winter. We don't even really need it. Like the coldest it gets in the winter is minus five. And that's like on the coldest night of these week long minus 30, minus, minus 40 week events. And the coldest I found it got was, was minus five. So considering that and considering like our goals for the space in the winter is just to grow some spinach and kale and carrots uh, over the winter, those can easily take those kind of temperatures. So it's just performed so well. Yeah. Um, I'm also really, really happy with, uh, in the, the Verge Permaculture ebook, you talk about having ventilation on both sides of the building and on these hot days like today and even on Friday when it was, you know, plus 35, the building just vents so well that uh, I've been really, really happy with it. The orientation of the greenhouse is directly solar south. so. Uh, yeah, so it's pointing right at the Three Sisters for us and that's really important in terms of uh, picking up as much solar heat energy as we can. Uh, the glazing angle I believe is 30 degrees uh, and so that was recommended by our engineer Robin Zernhilt as uh, uh, the best, the most optimal uh, angle so that we would be able to catch as much light in the shoulder season when it is starting to become more limited or a limiting factor uh, and it's also important because that angle allows the any large snow uh, events to easily slough off the front without uh, causing any damage to the building. Um, we chose to use polycarbonate on the building uh, because it has got a fairly good R value to it and uh, it scatters the light very well. Well, these walls are made from our straw bale, so 18 inches thick. Uh, the straw's coming from our friends in car stairs. Uh, and then we had a clay slip on it with uh, clay plaster and then uh, a lime wash finish. So really good at holding in that heat. And then in the winter time, when we have low light conditions, the white is reflecting the light back to create more light for us. Uh, initially, I was worried about the straw bale wall in the greenhouse because of the humidity, but it hasn't been an issue whatsoever. One important design uh, decision that we made that I think has paid off really well for the greenhouse is that we only put the trench rubble foundation around the perimeter of the building with um, insulation tied in all the way six feet down. And what this do does for us is that it allows the garden beds to be directly connected with the subsoil. And we found that the plants uh, really like to have this connection uh, maintained. When we first installed and started growing in the passive solar greenhouse, we didn't have an irrigation system whatsoever, so it was all hand watering, which uh, was a little bit time consuming. Uh, and we also had issues with uh, sort of hitting the leaves with the water and, and that created more powdery mildew issues. So now that we have it installed, it's uh, it saved us a lot of time so we can concentrate on more important issues that we have around the garden. And we've also found we have it hooked up to an automatic irrigation system that goes off. And so it uh, saves us time. And uh, it's also saved us with uh, bottom end rot. So just having that consistent watering, uh, the plants have responded really well to that as well. In the winter, uh, well, you can see right now that we are at the height of the summer hothouse crop. 
with the kids coming back in a couple of weeks, that's great. Uh, but the school season uh, goes well into the winter and so we've already started a whole bunch of celery that will be replacing these tomatoes and we'll be growing spinach and carrots and kale and experimenting with a couple other things. So this greenhouse, uh, our original goal for the greenhouse was it was for it to be a three season greenhouse and it's performed so well that it's turned into a four season. So we're able to grow food all through the winter here in Canmore, Alberta, where it gets down to minus 30, minus 35. We don't have to use any fuel whatsoever in order to, to do that. And we get a lot of people raising their eyebrows when they hear that because it's a pretty amazing thing that just the proper design for the building can have such an amazing effect on being able to grow food in the winter in Canmore, Alberta. Our ventilation strategy for the greenhouse is a number of awning windows that on a, on, as it gets hotter, we're able to open them up and uh, get air circulating in here. And then on the really hot days, we have doors on the east and west end of the greenhouse and that really creates a nice uh, cross breeze uh, that cools the, the greenhouse down. Our, an additional ventilation strategy that we've put in place for the greenhouse was that we were finding a couple years ago we were having a lot of really sunny days that were very very cool outside so we didn't want to open our windows too much and let it cool down in here so we decided to invest in a couple solar voltaic cells that uh, charge the battery and we have a couple greenhouse fans here that on those days allows us to circulate air in the greenhouse and helps mitigate some of the condensation issues that we were having and also decreases uh, powdery mildew.